We're celebrating today a special day. It's called Australia Day. And that's an amazing day. Some couple hundred years ago, a guy was sailing down the east coast of Australia and he saw some land and he saw some trees and he needed a new mast for his boat so he thought he'd come in and have a look and obviously he met some people here. But I want to tell you that 400 years ago there was another gentleman in a boat. And this is what he said. Let the heavens, the earth, the waters with all their creatures and all those here present, witnesses, witness that I, Captain, I'm going to get this wrong. He most likely wouldn't even acknowledge it if it was a roll call. Pedro Ferdinando de Quinzo. <laughs> now, I know that's not his name, but anyhow. In the name of Jesus Christ, host this emblem of the Holy Cross on which Jesus Christ was crucified and whereon he gave his life for the ransom, the remedy for all the human race. On this day of Pentecost, May 14, 1606, I take possession of all this part of the south as far as the pole in the name of Jesus, which from now on shall be called the southern land of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody made a declaration. And in that declaration was power. In that declaration was authority. In that declaration, all of heaven stands still and takes note of what is being said. And I want to say, it's, I don't believe it's the time to sit around and play church. It's a time to stand up and begin to declare. Declare that we are children of the Most High God. Declare that the army of God is rising. There is an army that's beginning to rise. Start to declare, I am healed. I am whole. I am a champion. I have been made by God. I'm part of this great end time revival that's beginning to spread across the land. Know that the power of God is in you. And so I want to speak a little bit this morning about how important is it to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How important is it to be filled with the power of God? How important is it to allow that anointing to, to, to just flow through our lives and touch us? How important is it to be led by the Spirit? How important is it is for the anointing to come around our lives and break the yoke? How important is it for the power of God to be able to made, be made manifest through our lives that we could lay hands on the sick and that they would recover? How important is it to know that we are carriers of, a, of an amazing move of God, um, something there that God has ordained. It is not church ordained. It is not man ordained. But God says if you will declare it, if, we, if you will declare it, who is going to declare it in this hour that we live in? I believe that we're going to see the greatest move of God that anybody has ever seen. And Jesus give us, gave, gave us instructions. And he said in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 4, and he, and he said, And when they were assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from J Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. I want to tell you that God has given us precious promises. Amen. Those promises are yea and amen. And when God spoke and he spoke these words, it wasn't just idle talk. He said, I want you to know this. You must wait. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere until you have received the promise which is of the Father, which you heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Amen. And it says in verse 9, when he's spoken these things, they watched him and he, was, and he went away. He was, he was taken up in the cloud. I want to tell you the last words that Jesus spoke on this planet to his, to his church, to his people, was don't go anywhere until you've been endured with power from on high. Church, we cannot fluff around and play church. We need the Holy Ghost power. We need the anointing. In, in Acts 1.8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon me, upon you. You're going to be witnesses unto me. You're going to carry my mantle. You're going to carry that anointing. You're going to speak with one that with authority. There's something that's going to be around your life that's going to change you. It's called the mighty power of God. Do you believe that today? 
The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole place where they were sitting. There was a group of people that were assembled together, and God began to move on them. Today God can move on your life. I don't believe that we just come to church to play church. I believe I've come to church today to hear from God, to receive from God, for God to be able to touch something on the inside of me. Chains can be broken from my life. Strongholds can be smashed. But even greater than that, God wants to put something on the inside of me that will cause me to rise above the circumstances of life. I will rise above every thing that the enemy would try to put against me. Try to, and I can rise and I can conquer and I can win. When that gets on the inside of me, I know, I know because I know because I know that no weapon formed against me can prosper. But why? Because God in me, the hope of glory. It's God in me. It's the power of God. He told me, he said, Neil, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. Power. Power, wonder-working power. And I thank God that that power has come on so inside of me. I've seen the move of God. I've seen the hand of God. But let's read on here. And it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit where they were sitting. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they're all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it, and it speaks there that there are groups of different people there, they're all different kinds of people. But I want to tell you that the Spirit of God was poured out that day, not just to touch a few, but it was to touch all that were hungry, all that were there that could receive it. It wanted to touch every person. But my Bible tells me that there were some there that as this came, it said they didn't understand it. They, 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 they didn't understand what was going on. They couldn't work it out. There's something happening here. Uh, and, and, and they couldn't work it. You see, I believe that a move of the Spirit of God was birthed that day, a supernatural manifestation. Today we call it the church. The church means the called out ones. But the Bible says that people were, many were confused. Many didn't understand what was going on. And others who were open to what God was doing were filled with power. You see, today we live in a world, and if you're not hungry for God, and if you're not open to God, and if you're not open to the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God moves, all that's going to happen is going to bring confusion to your thinking. But when you're hungry for God, when you want God, when you want God and the Spirit of God comes upon you and the God starts to move, there's something on the inside of you that resonates on the inside of you and you know because you know because you know it's God. Amen. And we're not running around trying to have 25 different understandings of why this is happening. All I know is that this group of people, they didn't really know, but God said, I'm going to do a new thing. In the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit. I'm going to do something in this earth that perhaps has never happened before. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit just fell on a few. It fell on Moses. It fell on Joshua. It fell on different ones there. And it fell on them because of a purpose or of a task that God wanted them to do. But you see, there was a time there when the enemy, the enemy came and, and, and destroyed man's connection with God. And man fell into sin. They were separated from God. God just couldn't pour out his spirit like he wanted to. So he would select different ones that would carry his mantle, different ones that would carry his anointing, different ones that would be his voice. But you see, there's something happened one day as Jesus hung upon that cross. Friend, I don't ever want to underestimate the cross. I do not want to underestimate what Jesus did that day as he hung there on that cross, as he paid the price. He who knew no sin, God put sin upon him that you and I could be free. And that was an amazing thing. But friend, I want to tell you this. You need the power of God in your life today so you can be what God wants you to be, so you can take what God has done for you, but that, that what God has accomplished on the cross of Calvary and make it real in your life so that you'll go forth with power, so you'll go forth with authority in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? 
We're living in an amazing day. It is an amazing day. It is an amazing day. There are great manifestations. The ones that were not open to God, what God was doing, were confused. But people who were, were open for, to God, they were filled and empowered with the power of God. You've got to go back to the river. I don't know about you, but I want to get back in the river. I, I want to drink from that river. God said in Isaiah 43 verse 19 that he was going to do a new thing. Pentecost released the power, the dunamis power of God that flooded into his disciples. He, the Holy Spirit, totally transformed. He transformed lives. Friend, I, I want to tell you this. We've got to somehow or other just break false humility. Break that religious lie. And we've got to start saying, the, the zeal of God has consumed me. Something on the inside is consuming me. And I make no excuse for it. And I'm not trying to be religious or anything else, but I want to tell you, the zeal of God is consuming me. When I hear this man prophesy, when I hear him speak words over people's lives, I know that I carry the dunamis power of God to smash and pull down and break strongholds. The zeal of God consumes me. It burns within me. I long, like man, I long to see a revival. I long to see that young man running and totally whole. It irks me to think that the enemy would come back and attack you. I'm mad at the enemy, amen. How dare he attack you? And then the man of God comes and prophesies over you and, and talks about you and, and your love and everything like that. Man, something's got to stir on the inside of us. The zeal of God has to consume us. And it doesn't matter if you're 92 or 150, hallelujah. I hear it's your birthday today. God bless you, Sam. <laughs> The zeal of God, it consumes us. It burns within us. On the day of Pentecost, the fire of God got into the church and people began to rise up. Peter stood up and, he, and, he, and all of a sudden he's been endured with power. A man not long before denied Jesus. Three times he, he, it says that he even blasphemed to try to Prove that he wasn't one of those Christians. When I first got saved, I didn't get saved, I went to church. And I didn't want anybody to think for one minute that I was one of them. I used to get up there on the fence. I'd sit up on the fence right outside the front door of the church. It was a, it was a wire netting fence. And I'd pull out my packet of ready rub champion ruby and I'd roll me the biggest smoke you could ever have. I'd light her up. I'd blow smoke over everybody. I'm here, but I'm not there. <laughs> I'm here. You see... But something happened to this old smoker. He got on fire. He got on fire. See, 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 the, the river, the zeal of God. Not many days he, he'd done that, but now the, the power of God is on him. He's full of God's power. He stands in front of an angry mob and he said, you've just murdered the Son of God. You've just murdered. You see, boldness is lack of fear. Boldness is not something you can put on and try to pretend. It's something on the inside of you that is lack of fear. Boldness isn't something you put on and off. Boldness is a lifestyle. Boldness is who you are. When the passion and zeal of God comes upon a man, woman or child, it totally changes them. We want to just see the presence of God. Church life becomes 
totally different. It's not a matter of coming, singing a few songs, and giving God a tip. Christian life takes on a whole new meaning. You see, I believe Christianity is either everything or it's nothing. Passion, passion, passion. Passion will cause you to pursue Christ. Zeal, zeal, zeal. Zeal will take you to your destiny. There are many with destinies, but nobody gets there. Does passion for our Savior consume you? Does your eyes fill with tears when you think and ponder, meditate on His presence as it washes over you? Does it touch your heart? On the day of Pentecost, it was a mighty rushing wind, a deluge, a flood. Joel spoke about an outpouring that would birth a new covenant church, people. When Jesus said, I will build my church, he wasn't talking about a building. Yes, he was a carpenter, but Jesus is not up there at the moment with his nail bag and hammer. But I want to tell you, he's up there with the power of God looking for a bunch of people, looking for a bunch of people. Let me say it again. Looking for a bunch of people that say, I just don't want church. I just don't want church. I just don't want church. I want a move of God's Spirit, amen. And so when Jesus said, I'm going to build my church, he said, I'm going to build David so that the gates will not prevail against David. Hallelujah. And if we can have that kind of thinking on the inside of us, when hairy legs comes by and starts pouring in his rubbish and his lies and his deceit, we will make a declaration. Instead of accepting it, we will start to say, no, no, no. The zeal of God has consumed me. It burns on the inside of me. I've been filled with the dunamis power of the mighty Holy Ghost. I have the power of God on the inside of me. Greater is he that's inside of me than any devil and any sickness and any disease. And today I make a decree. I am healed. I am whole. I am his. Hallelujah. And I will stand and I will walk and I will declare that our God reigns. Hallelujah. He is not dead. He is alive. He's moving by his power. He's moving by His Spirit. He's touching, but He's looking for a people that will not bow down. Instead, stand up. It's time to stand up. It's time to make a stand for Jesus. Amen. I want to be built by God. Amen. In Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. You see, he, he, he stood there and a bunch of people, they didn't even know who he was. Up at that point, he was nobody. He was just a good Jewish boy that went to church. They gave him the Bible. But you see, something had happened to him. Something had happened to him. He'd been touched by the power of God. He had been filled with the power of God. The anointing of God was on him. So what does he do? He doesn't go and say, well, I'm just a good Jewish boy and hallelujah, I'm in church. No, he stood up that day and he opened up the book and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Would be to God today that we walked out of this place and we started to make a declaration that the Spirit of God is upon me and that God has anointed He's anointed me to preach the Word of God. He's anointed me to heal the sick. He's anointed me to raise the dead. He's anointed me to do whatever He wants me to do. And greater is He that's within me than He that's within the world. A 
I mightn't have natural teeth, but I got false teeth, and I want to tell you they're just as sharp as any others. Anointed me to deliver, to set the captives free. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Let me say this, and I, want, I, I would pray that you would write this in, the, in your mind. The only power the devil has over us is what you allow him to have. The only power the devil has over us is what you give him. You give it to him by your words. The cross of Calvary is where Satan, his power was destroyed. The Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that he might destroy the works of Satan. Ignor ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is death. If Christians don't know who they are, if they're ignorant to what God has done for us, you'll die. You'll die spiritually. Man was still dominated by the results of the fall. Flesh, mental ascent. But then Jesus poured out his spirit after he rose again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross is so important, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit to enforce, to equip, to empower us, to experience and demonstrate all that Jesus has done for us. Jesus accomplished whatever he accomplished on the cross. I believe now we can be dominated and controlled by the power of God. I want to be led by the Spirit. That same power that conquered hell and death. It's, a, it's at the cross is where God handled the old creation, the old nature, where he dealt with it. He dealt with it in full. Do you believe that today? Jesus nailed it. What he was going through, he nailed it. He nailed it to the cross. At, at salvation, the Adam nature dies. The Christ nature begins. The deeper you go with Christ, the old nature loses its grip. You're still controlled by the old nature. Just get deeper with God. Get deeper with Christ. The new birth is something which happens entirely within. It's got nothing to do with the flesh. Something on the inside of us will rise up. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, let's have a little look at that. Ephesians 2, and it says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. You he made alive who were dead. Our spirit man had to be quickened, had to be made alive. It was dead. It was Look at Ephesians chapter 1, and, and Greg spoke about this last week. In verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory and the inheritance of the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in which he worked which he worked in Jesus. Amen. You believe that? Oh, we just went over two pages and that's why I was having a bit of difficulty. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, amen doesn't really matter. A lot of things don't matter. I believe that there is a, got to come a shout in the house of God. Yeah. I can't overemphasize the cross of Christ where Jesus carried and suffered our shame. The weight of sin was laid upon him. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that in him we would become the righteousness of God. He con Jesus conquered Satan and his hosts. He triumphed over them, amen. He rose again, conquered death. But we need the revelation or the illumination, spiritual enlightenment that only the, only the Holy Spirit can give us. 
You don't find it on the Kellogg's Corn Flakes packet. <laughs> See, the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. You can talk to a Christian, even a tongue-talking Christian, and if they aren't digging into God, when you start talking about the things of the Spirit, they think you're crazy. Is that true? You see, a Christian can build his life on the rock or on the sand. God calls the ones on the sand foolish. In John 7 verse 37 it says, If you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're thirsty, come and drink. That's the greatest invitation anybody could ever have. We're going to have a sausage sizzle later on, but I want to tell you this one's better. <laughs> if you're thirsty, come and drink from me. If you're thirsty, come and drink. Jesus is inviting us to come to him. You're not too bad or you're not too good. Peter denied Jesus, but he found his way back. It's not too late. There is a way back. So some people today, today is just a great day of refreshing as the power of God inside us gets ignited, gets, gets touched again or, or the wind blows over us. We're singing songs and I don't know, you, you want to get up and dance, you want to do something. I, I, I don't know, I, I really don't know, but somehow or other there's something inside of me that's trying to get out. I can't explain it. I, I don't know. It's almost impossible. And to, but <laughs> there's something just wants to get out. Yeah. Something wants to shout. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to get loosed, amen. amen. Now, come on, come on, I'm, I'm meaning it. We've got, to, we've got to begin to shout. We've got to begin, begin to declare. The other day from Joe's funeral, we had some cakes and stuff, and I noticed two of my neighbours there talking, and, and, I, and I, said, I thought I'd go over and give them some, some of these cakes. And as I walked over to give them the cakes, the lady looked at me and and and. and and, and she, she just looked and she said, I've got stage four lung cancer. Husband's eyes are just red raw. No longer was I giving them cake. I just walked over and put my arm around her and all I could say is only believe. Only believe, honey. Only believe. They're not, they don't go to church. They're not church goers. I said, you've known me now for a couple of years. I said, I'm not, I'm not, Religious, I'm not trying to push anything on you. But I said, only believe, only believe. And she looked at me, and that's so strange. This lady with sta stage four cancer, just been told that she hasn't got long, most likely to live. And I started talking to her, and you know what she said? She said, I don't have to go to church, do I? I said, no, you don't. But you'll want to. <laughs> No, you don't, but you'll want to. You'll want to. You'll want to. You see, I, got, I find I have to keep coming back to the river to drink. I don't know about you, Greg, but I get thirsty. As a matter of fact... <laughs> I'm getting it now. <laughs> anybody else getting it now? Come on, anybody else? Give me a wave and shame the devil. I mean, anybody else thirsty? Anybody else getting it now? Anybody else feeling it now? See, see you got to get back to the river. You got to get back to the river. I told a story the other day about this lady. We were over in New Zealand 
and uh, the Spirit of God started to fall and, and, and people started to fall off their chairs and people started to laugh and others started to cry and things started happening. And this lady was obviously a, a woman of some area. I'm not, I don't mean that, uh, of, of some influence. Uh, and, and she was all dressed up so beautifully. And obviously, what was going on offended her. So she got up and she said, Ooh, I'm out of here. Two hours later, when we were leaving the meeting, we found her in the car park. Rolling. <laughs> laughing. In the dirt. Walked over to her. She was so happy. She was so happy. You see, if you get in the river, <laughs> got to get in the river. There is a river. There is a river. It flows from God above. <laughs> there is a river. It's filled with God's grace. Come unto Jesus, all you that are thirsty. All who want that touch, that fresh touch, that will change our lives. Those who want to go deeper. Those who really want to be ready for the next move of God. Amen. Let's just stand to our feet. Greg. Gregory, <laughs> come out here, Greg. How many people are thirsty and bold enough to say, I want a drink of the river of God? I want to come to the river. Friend, you might have been saved a hundred years. I've been saved nearly 50. I'm still thirsty. I am still thirsty. I really mean it. I, I can feel it coming now. And I believe today that if you want to come and let that river flow into you, that you'll go home different. You'll go home different. I don't know about you, Greg. I want to pray for your hands. Yes, sir. Father, mm. in the mighty name of Jesus, mm. I loosen yes. you, sir. I release mm. you. Yes, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus. Who, wants to, who wants to get filled? Come on, come on, just come on out. Come on out, come on out. We've got plenty of time here at this place. We've got plenty of time. Come on, look, I've, I've purposely brought this thing down because I don't want just an emotional response. Too often we just have an emotional response. I want you, if you're hungry, you know that. You don't need anything other than just God.